Hello friends, I'm trying to recover something, so bear with me.
The angels of God guard us through this night and silence the powers of darkness. The Spirit of God be our guide to lead us to peace and glory. By God's great mercy, we have been born to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our first reading tonight is from the book of Acts. We're reading verses 14 through 25 of the 18th chapter. Just as Paul was about to speak, Gallio said to the Jews, if it were a matter of crime or serious villainy, I would be justified in accepting the complaint of you Jews, but since it is a matter of questions about words and names in your own law, see to it yourselves. I do not wish to be a judge of these matters. And he dismissed them from the tribunal. Then all of them seized Sosthenes, the official of the synagogue, and beat him in front of the tribunal, but Gallio made no attention to any of these things. After staying there for a considerable time, Paul said farewell to the believers and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. At Synchrae, he had his hair cut, for he was under a vow. When they reached Ephesus, he left them there, but first he himself went into a synagogue and had a discussion with the Jews. When they asked him to stay longer, he declined, but on taking leave of them, he said, I will return to you if God wills. Then he set sail from Ephesus. When he had landed at Caesarea, <clears throat> he went up to Jerusalem and greeted the church and then went down to Antioch. After spending some time there, he departed and went from place to place through the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Now there came to Ephesus a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria. He was an eloquent man, well versed in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with burning enthusiasm and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And then our psalm for tonight is Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord, give heed to my sighing. Listen to the sound of my cry, my King and my God, for to you I pray. O Lord, in the morning you hear my voice, in the morning I plead my case to you and watch. For you are not a God who delights in wickedness, evil will not sojourn with you. <clears throat> The boastful will not stand. Before your eyes, you hate all evildoers. You destroy those who speak lies. The Lord abhors the bloodthirsty and deceitful. But I, through the abundance of your steadfast love, will enter your house. I will bow down towards your holy temple in all of you. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness. Because of my enemies, make your way straight before me. For there is no truth in their mouths, their hearts are destruction, their throats are open graves, they flatter with their tongues. Make them bear their guilt, O God, let them fall by their own counsels. Because of their many transgressions, cast them out, for they have rebelled, rebelled against you. But let all who take refuge in you rejoice, let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them so that those who love your name may exalt in you. For you bless the righteous, O Lord. You cover them with favor as with a shield. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forevermore. Amen.
And then our next reading is from John's Gospel, the sixth chapter. We're reading the first 15 verses of this very long chapter about bread. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now, the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about five thousand in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized what they were about, that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God stands forever. Amen. Our reflection tonight is based on verses 8 and 9 of Psalm 5. Lead me, O Lord, in your righteousness because of my enemies. Make your way straight before me, for there is no truth in their mouths. Their hearts are destruction, their throats are open graves. They flatter with their tongues. I admit it, God of my life. They are like those sirens of old, standing on their porches, their platforms, their religion, calling out to me as I continue this pilgrimage through life. They know that their honeyed whispers tickle my soul and make me want to hear more of such sweet nothings. They desire only to swallow my weary heart and then spit out my life strip bare of love, of grace, of trust, onto the piles of the bones of the rest of their victims. So lash me to you with the swaddling cloths of hope Press your hands tight around my ears so I will not hear a single tempting note and guide me to your safe haven of peace.
invite you now to join with me in a few moments of prayer this evening. And as we begin, let us think back on the day and gather up all those moments of goodness, of grace, of wonder, of those voices of hope and kindness that were heard in the midst of so many angry and bitter voices, of those people who touched our lives, of those who work for restoring justice, for those who seek to bring people together in the midst of so much division, for those who try to help others heal in the midst of so much brokenness. And let us gather up all those moments, all those voices, all those people, all that silence of generosity and kindness and gentleness. And in a silence, let us offer up those as prayers of thanksgiving and praise to our God. We are especially grateful to you, O oh God, for all those gathered in these moments through this medium stretching across the miles and the oceans, for the communities and the families they represent, for those places where people try to share your goodness and your kindness, your grace and your justice and peace. We are especially grateful for the ministers and elders and members of the URC churches in Lincolnshire. And we continue to offer up our prayers as we do each evening for those in need, for the brokenness of our world, for the struggles of creation, for all the worries and the doubts, the concerns and care, care that we carry in our hearts. We pray, as we always do, for a peaceful resolution to the bloodshed and violence in Gaza and Israel, for the restoration of peace and justice in Ukraine and Sudan and every place blighted by war and humanitarian distress, and for those places and communities that are beset by hate and anger. And amongst those known to us individually, we pray for those who are currently very ill, including Margaret Davis, Secretary of the former Rose Hill URC, and pray for my sister-in-law, Deborah, who is now back in intensive care, and unfortunately, the outlook does not look good. So we pray for Deborah and for her siblings, for Bonnie and Heather, for Paul, for her extended family, for her friends, for all those whose lives she has touched. We pray for those who are awaiting surgery, including Barbara Turner of Holly Moorside URC, Elaine Dre, Secretary of the former Ermine URC, with Allison for Sunita of Abbots Road URC. We pray for those who are recovering from surgery or illness or continuing to receive treatment, including Chris Willis, Synod Administrator and Office Manager of East Midland Synod, for Graham Golly, for the Reverend Helen Wakefield Carr, for the Reverend Caroline Andrews, for the Reverend Hamish Temple, for Natalie, a young mother who's recovering from her successful surgery, for the Reverend Graham and Vera Maskery, for Monia's parish priest, Andy, for June Pevy, with we pray with Teddy for his housemate, Jerry. We pray for Andy, husband to Caroline and father of three girls, and for two and a half year old Noah and his family. We also pray for Noah's grandfather, Craig, recovering from heart attack. And we pray for members of the royal family. We pray for those who are living with long-term conditions or in difficult circumstances, along with all those who look after them. For Roger Allen and for the Reverend Ruth Allen caring for him for Jean Schink and for the Reverend Brian Schink in his care for her, and with the Reverend Claire and the Reverend Brian Davison for their daughter, Susie. We pray with Ankatea for her friend, Bea, and also for Kelly and for Laverne as she cares for him. We pray with Andy for his dad, Mike, and are grateful for the ongoing care Liz and Ruth provide for Mike. We pray for John and for Irene as she cares for him and for Cheryl, 
as well as for Prince and the rest of the family caring for her. We also pray for those who are mourning the loss of loved ones, especially the Reverend Maureen Buxton and all who grieve for Don Buxton. And in the silence of these moments, we would offer up those prayers and cares of our heart that we can only speak to you, O God. For what shall we pray this night? God of love and hope, as we let go of this day and place ourselves into your care, we pray you would hear our prayers. For those for whom their day was filled with loss and grief, for those who continue to try to find work after so long, for those who worry about reports of new diseases. For what shall we pray this night? Jesus is those who struggle as well as those who straggle to keep up with all who have so much. We would place our hearts into your care and compassion. We pray this night for all who have been affected by these last four years, physically, spiritually, mentally. We pray for those who long for that spiritual gift called justice and for those who seem to try to complicate the giving of justice. For what shall we pray this night? Spirit who is with us in times of worry as well as in moments of wonder, we place our souls into your care this night as we pray for peace for all in far too many places, enduring war and destruction. We pray for all who seek to live out who they are as individuals, yet experience rejection from those in their circle of friends and family. For what shall we pray this night? God in community, holy and one, be with us in our sleeping be with us in our waking, be with us in our living, be with us in our hoping, we pray. Amen. And now, in our own words, tradition, and language, let us offer up the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And now may the peace of the rolling waves, the peace of the sonnet mountains, the peace of the singing stars, and the deep, deep peace of the Prince of Peace be with you all now and forevermore. Amen. And may you rest in God's grace and hope this night, dear friends. <laughs>